Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 50, 52? 52. Episode 52 of the Journey Podcast. This is, uh, if you are a listener that's been here before, this seems like a foreign setup, and that's because this is probably our third time taking the podcast outside of my mom's cottage. Yeah. But <laughs> today we are here with someone very special, uh, someone that we're probably not even that qualified to speak with. But uh, he's a very smart man, and we have a little bit of an intro here that I didn't write. So today on the Journey Podcast, we have Nick Cosman, who studied engineering and physics at Queen's University in Canada. He also founded salesprocess.io, where he has sold his framework to over 2,000 SaaS companies and created $1 billion in enterprise value for his customers. He's racked up over $20 million selling his growth consulting services and is now rebranded to growthconsulting.com to show others how to net millions of dollars in the shortest amount of time possible. Nick fucking Cosman. How you feeling? I'm good. Thank you for the intro. <laughs> how was it? It was good. It was good? Yeah. It was all right. Thanks, J5. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, really, this probably isn't even a great question for you, but like, so you hear that intro, how'd you do it? How would I do it? Like how, no, how did you do it? Like, how did you like rack up $20 million? Okay. So the, the, you, I think you guys nailed it. The fastest way to hit escape velocity or your first few million dollars, which is, which I don't think a lot of people understand is a few, is a few million bucks. If you're married, it's about $5 million. If you're single, it's about two and a half million dollars. And to, what's the fastest way to get there? Mm. Uh, that's what I was looking. I was looking for a vehicle when I finished school. Um, to get to, to just basically to get to escape velocity. Right. And, uh, and that's what I found. So I found growth consulting, which was pairing with a company, helping them scale and charging a fee and then doing that over and over and over again for a couple of years straight to, uh, to hit escape velocity. So I believe that's the most efficient path for some people. There's two, there's two areas that you can go in. You can go in the engineering route or you can go in the sales and marketing route. And if if you're a sales and marketing type of person, which a lot of people are, growth consulting is the fastest path by far. Now, was was this like a calling? Did you feel destined to do this? Or was this just an, like a, a way to like, hey, like I want to make as much money as possible? The second, yeah. That's, there's no calling. You didn't, I didn't even know what I was doing when I was wow. first yeah. starting. I just was going where the money was. Right. That's another thing. You want to go with... If you're a growth consultant, you want to go where the money is. Where's the funding going? Where's the profitable businesses? And how do you help those people who have raised money or who are operating profitable businesses? So, like, for me, I'm a former athlete. He's a former athlete. Like, growing up, we didn't really give a shit about money uh, because we just went off, like, what was cool. And, like, obviously now, like, being 25 years old, like, how you be cool, like, in today's society is, like, to have money. Like, that's how you get girls. But, like when I was growing up, like it was like play football. So I got hit in the head a bunch of times and like, that's what I did. Like, at what point did you know that you wanted to make a lot of money? So I have a similar story. I played hockey in high school and that was like the status thing to do in hockey. So I played triple A just enough. I got enough hockey to, to fulfill my needs. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then I went to a, a really good school and I realized that, okay, the, the metric here is money. So I was, I needed a plan to make a lot of money. Mm. That's, that's it. And then what was that first, like, what was your first taste of money? Door to door sales. Yeah. Yeah. I was a top door to door salesman. So I was, I paid for my own schooling and then to pay it off, I started in door to door sales, selling lawn services to just door to door. Yeah. And I would run around with an aerator. This is like 300 pound machine. And I would do like three or I would do 30 lawns a day. Mm. So imagine mowing 30 grasses a day, right? Like mm. I would do 30 lawns a day at the, at the peak. And uh, yeah, I honed sales skills and that was my first taste. I was making thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a day as a door to door salesman at 20. Wow. Now, obviously you've had your fair share of taste of money now. And, you know, they always say like money doesn't buy happiness. So we talk about it sometimes, but it's hard for us to even have a true understanding of it because we haven't had a real taste of money yet. So what is your perspective on that? Like how much does life change? And is, is it true that like 
Does it make life more fun? Is it easier? Is it harder? Because at the end of the day, we're still all humans and we still all have like our mental health, our sanity, family relationships. So like, what was the difference between life before money and then life after money? It's a big difference. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's just different. Yeah. But I would definitely prefer having money. Now keep in mind, money's not the most important thing because you need your legal, you need your health. Those are the two, those are the other two big ones. So right. you can have a lot of money, but no legal, you can be locked behind bars. Yeah. If you got a lot of money and no health, then that's, that's nonsense. So yeah, that's not the most important thing, but yeah, you need your, you need your health, you need your legal, you need your wealth, you have your relationships after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me about like, what made you fascinated about escape velocity? Like why did, like how did growth consulting become a thing? Okay. So I kind of fell into it. So yeah. I was a salesman. I was a door to door salesman. And then I went to where I was useful. I know I know, I knew that I needed to sell something high ticket and with high margin. And that was software mm. at the time. And so I just went to somebody who was selling software or someone who had made software and said, Hey, I'm a salesman. I can do door to door. I could probably sell this too. And that's what I did. And so by doing that, I create a lot of value for the business. And that's what I, I became a growth consultant. So when I was selling, I needed my own leads. How do I get leads in software? I needed to build landing pages. So I built my own landing pages, ran my own ads. And then I sold over the phone. I was just trying to get appointments right. because in door to door, I was used to just running up to a door and knocking and there was an opportunity. So in this, in software, I had to get the, I had to do everything end to end. And so that's what growth consulting turned out to be. Turns out a lot of people didn't do that. There were, they separated the marketing and the sales and marketers would generate leads and the salesperson could close deals. Well, what I, I combined the two or I combined the two, right? So, um, the, the salesman was generating the leads, building the pages and then closing. And that gave them a lot of control. And that's essentially what growth consulting is. So you go into a business, you find an offer and then you generate the leads with pages and close over the phone and then you build a team around you. And so that's how you can do millions of dollars just with one sales guy. And that's how you can make your first couple million, couple million dollars if you find the right offer. So who, who is growth consulting for? Like, cause I know so many people, um, you know, as a former athlete, right. That are, that are like young and hungry and fucking lost. Um, and you know, who doesn't want to fucking make millions of dollars. Right. But it's like, do you need to possess certain abilities to be a growth consultant? You have to be a really, you have to be a superstar. Right. So athletes, they're typically superstars in yeah. their, in their field. That's what they're. So ex athletes are really good. Mm -hmm. Um, who's the ideal person? Typically they're under 40 and they're a couple years in the online game already. Mm -hmm. So they've already been through some of the Ty Lopez stuff. They've already been, they've already done some Grant Cardone or they've read the books. They're already down the path. It's not like the most, be it's not the beginner thing. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit, it's maybe two, three years into the journey is that's where you can do growth consulting. That's where we fit in. It's a more expensive thing. And it's, it's a vehicle to get you to the millions. So that's why you need to be in, in the industry for a couple of years, show that you're a superstar and then. Can you take someone that is coming from a place of nothing and make them a growth consultant? Like, like let's say I have no sales experience or marketing experience, but I have some, I have a fucking, I have like my life savings, you know, I'm fucking, I'm post-college football and I just want to make fucking cash. Like, can I be a growth consultant? You definitely can, but you start as a salesperson. Yeah. yeah. So if from starting from nothing, it depends on what cash de depends on which cash you have. Yeah. Because like to work with the best people, it's just you have to spend the money, right? So um if you're just starting from scratch, I would suggest that you start with sales. Start with a sales role. Yeah. And find a decent offer. Find somebody in your network who's making a little bit of money. They're buying the Audis. They're buying, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're, they're going out to the club. They're making, find something like that. That's a bright spot. 
or better yet, find someone in a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. That's actually how to do it. Um, and then go work for them as a salesperson, find an offer. And then once you feel that you can do some sort of end to end sales, that's when you become a growth consultant because that, yeah. Cause then after that, then you layer on the marketing, you layer on the build this, the landing page building and the prospecting. So it's good right. to, it's good to understand the sales first. Like what I did, I started door to door sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you, so obviously, so you think that time when you were doing door to door sales, like did it build a skill set and a mindset that has propelled you maybe faster along than other people in this industry? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So then what's the, like, what's the timeline as a GC? Like, let's say like I do the two, three years of like learning sales. I come to you. Um, like what's my process look like? The timeline, first you get your, you get a case study, yeah. which could take you six to 12 months. Yeah. And then with that case study, then you sell 30 to $50,000 deals to other people who are similar to that case study. So that it could take you six to 12 months to get your first one, but it, it's going to be a spectacular case study that will net you 200 to 300 grand, which mm. is a pretty good starting point. Yeah. And then once you have that case study, like we have a, a customer um, in the mastermind who's selling thirty to fifty thousand dollar deals, just and all you need to do is sell five of those a month to get to two fifty a month, and that's you do that for a year to two years, you hit escape velocity, you get your first couple million. You got to pay tax on your on your your net, yeah, which is like twenty five to forty percent depending on where you are, and yeah, that's what you do. Okay. What, what would you say like are the essential skill sets needed to be able to make these sales? Cause like for, I guess a lot of people listening, they probably have never even thought of this kind of money or thought it was possible. So what, like, is there any guarantees in it? Like if I do X, you know, this will happen or is it all just kind of like, just, be yeah, we cool? have a guarantee a hundred thousand a month in 12 months. Wow. Yeah. Which is like a big guarantee. There's few people that can do that, but for the right person, it's definitely possible. Mm. And it's, it's like, how are you so, I guess, confident, like to be able to give that type of guarantee? Cause I've seen people like be scared to give guarantees over like a $97 product. Cause I know that it works. I've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. Wow. It's fucking sick. All right. So I want to move out of GC a little bit, move a little bit more. into like generalized questions. Sure. Um, what do you think is the new oil, right? Like, so, you know, like NFTs were huge. Like everyone made money off NFTs. Like, are you predicting that there's going to be like a new thing, a new oil? Yeah. Or like a new, is it, you know, is it data? Like what, you know, like what's going to make people fucking a lot of money. It's going to be data, unique insights. Yeah. It's going to be information and and skills, which are unique insights. Yeah. Hmm. What do you mean by unique insights? Okay, so let's just let's assume that the energy is free. Okay, you can do whatever. You can do whatever the heck you want. You can drive wherever. You could go wherever. What? How are we gonna know who mates with who? What is the status? How do we determine status? Mm. It's gonna be through knowledge and information and control. So how do you get control over stuff? You have to have unique insights. So yeah. So like, what's, what are some of your goals moving forward? Like, are you just trying to scale this company to X and then ride off into the sunset and do some type of passion play? No, I just, the way that I approach things is I just show up every day Yeah. and then just put it out on the field Mm. and then whatever happens, happens is, and then that strategy propels you. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I don't know what the market's going to be like in a couple of years. I don't know what it's going to be like in 10 years. I, so the only thing you can do is like, just put it out on the field. Like you're an athlete, right? Yeah. Put it out on the field every day. And then you, sh- you end up where you end up. Yeah. Yeah. So like, is there any level of like, what do you do to stay sharp? Like, is there any type of like self help or routine that like, that you agree with? Like what's the, li- what's your life like to stay a fucking superstar GC, I guess. 
One thing. So for health, I could recommend uh, Kino Body. Yeah. Kinobody.com. That's Greg O'Gallagher's stuff. Yeah. He he understands the health stuff, so you can follow that protocol. That does really well. And then I read a lot, so that's part of the routine. So um, an hour to two hours a day just reading, yeah. like books. And then so you're either you're either selling and marketing. Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning is market. That's what I learned in door-to-door sales. If you go to the top salespeople, the first thing they do in the morning is prospect. So every day, it just go, this goes for anybody doing anything, uh, especially a GC or a salesperson or even a podcast like you guys are doing podcasts. First part of your day, even before exercising, which is important, is prospecting. So it's 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., prospecting, doing marketing writing because you're you're the sh- most sharp in the morning during right. that time picasso painted in the morning mozart wrote in the morning you should be prospecting in the morning and then after that uh selling and then building yeah yeah and then on on weekends or on slow days or like one day out of the week like a thursday or a sunday or something like that you can build yeah but if you prospect every morning, you will eventually know what needs to be built. You will eventually know what needs to be sold. And you cannot, you can't go wrong with that formula. Can you explain prospecting to someone that doesn't understand what that is? Talking to new people. Yeah. Yeah. Opening doors. And how uh, you talk about chemistry and physics and, and this stuff a lot, obviously engineering, you went to school for it. And how, how big of a role has that played into what you're doing now. It's just a way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you don't do chemistry and physics and stuff in yeah. business. It's just a way of solving problems. Yeah. That, that, that's kind of what I was getting at where it's like, maybe your perspective is different from the other people like in the game that are doing the same thing as you. Um, like how, how do you, how do you compare yourself or like, where do you rank yourself like in this, in this space? The one thing with the physics stuff is you can go all the way down to the bottom. So you can find cause effect relationships. That's what you're trained to do. So I've been able to do that a little bit better than people. Yeah. And then th- by going all the way down to the bottom, understanding root cause effect relationships, you can kind of leapfrog um, others that haven't done that. It's it, whoever can go to the, whoever can go lowest usually wins. Yeah. Wow. It seems to me that like you're like, your engineering, your physics is almost like your status Delta, you know, that's part of it. Yeah. But I also put in 10 years of sales training and I was the best salesman. So like I was a dog, man. So putting the one more door doing that, I was an athlete too. Right. Right, So that was just the physics and stuff was, is, is extra, Hmm. but you can definitely do it as a, as an athlete, as a salesman. Yeah. Like, do you think that's a bigger part? That's a way bigger part. Cause there's, better physicists out there than me. There's yeah. better engineers out there than me for sure. Right. But as far as the sales stuff goes, like there's, I, I, I feel like I'm in a top percentage there. Do you think, do you think that was, this was more of like a natural thing that yeah. like, it was like an intuitive thing that you just kind of naturally had. Yeah. Do you think that like, cause I'm not the fucking smartest tool in the shed. Maybe that's not true. Maybe I gotta stop saying that about myself, but like smartest tool in the shed. <laughs> I'm sure, I, you, I'm sure oh, you're, sharpest I'm sure you're good. <laughs> you know what? The funny thing is the smartest guys say this. They say stuff like that. Yeah. All the time. yeah, yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> 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 all right. So like my question to you is, do you need to be like, how intelligent do you have to be to make a lot of money? I don't think you, I honestly don't think I'm that intelligent at all. So, um, like it's just, damage it's if you want to make a lot of money it's he or she who can take the most damage wins yeah that's it so if think about what is intelligence like knowledge anyway it's a compounding learning so if you're learning the most then you're going to be you're going to have the most knowledge Mm, right um some people are gifted right i i honestly don't think there's guys that i i went to school with that were way smarter than me like they're in the physics program, like these guys were just like next level. Like it was just like, wow. Right. Yeah. Um, but then you also need a work ethic and, and uh, 
and you got to put it, you got to do the damage. You got to put, you got to get your damage in. So I did, I can, that's one thing that I was good at. I was taking a lot of damage with sales calls and just not really worrying about the work. Yeah. What, what is your, what is your outlook like on failure and suffering and like going through like the hard times? Like how, how do you view that? Cause I know everyone's perspective on that is usually a little different. Like what, what has been your like, like motivator to get through all of that? Well, sometimes the reason why it's hard is because you're following the wrong person or you have the wrong map. So when things are, when things are easy, it's because you're following the right path. Mm. Right. So like, I, th I think people make things unnecessarily hard on themselves by doing it blindfolded. Yeah. That's what I've learned. Yeah. 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 Like what's the difference between, you know, the diff knowing there's two, there's two types of heart. One is like you go to the gym and you know what your workout is and then you do your workout, right? Mm. That's hard. You, you're going to failure and you know, and, but it feels good afterwards, right? The other type of heart is going to the gym and not knowing what the workout is and not knowing what a machine is and not knowing anything. Mm. That is another type of heart, right? Yeah. So in that case, you would go find a trainer and they would train you on how to do things, right? So some people, they go to the gym without knowing anything to do. They don't know anything about a weight. Mm -hmm. And then they try and figure it out. Yeah, that's really, really hard. So there's two types of hard. Yeah. One, it requires you to like figure out the environment and it's unnecessary if you don't, if you, if you don't need to do that. Yeah. yeah. What were those hards for you? Honestly, I, I was lucky enough. I found mentors. So my first mentor was a door to door sales guy in Toronto or in uh, Canada. And we worked in Toronto. His name was Ben. He was a door to door. He operated 400 person sales team. So he took me under his wing and he sh showed me some things. So, um, that was, I was lucky there. And then I was also lucky to find a guy named Sam ovens for my online internet marketing journey. Mm -hmm. So I found him, I joined his stuff. He's the only mastermind that I've ever purchased. And I just shot up to the top because I, I thought that this guy knew what he was talking about and it turns out he did. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. Fuck yeah. So all I needed was two mentors. That's it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now my question, so I've noticed a lot with the online digital space, you see a lot of people coming out with ads and, and, and writing ads and like creating like these beautiful sales funnels, right? But they haven't actually done what it is that they're saying, but they've gotten really good at like creating, I guess, the sales process. Like, do you think that the internet can be misleading, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little hard right now because the platforms are not verifying some of the claims. Just in any unregulated market, that's what happens. Right. But over time, it people find the right the, the right people. People will get maybe burned on one or two things, but hopefully they can distinguish between who's legit and who's not legit. Yeah. How yeah. big how big is that like frowned upon in in your like area of expertise? Like you know, because I'm sure there's a lot of guys on the internet that are saying they're doing all these numbers and they can do this for you. Essentially and, and taking sales away from you, you know, or closing people. Or and it always comes back, though. Yeah. Right. Like I got people that take my stuff, they rip it off or whatever, but it'll always come back. Like it comes back in ways that I wouldn't think, like in trading. Like I get good trading ideas. Where do those come from? I don't know. Right. Mm. Like I make money in other areas. Th things just fall from the sky sometimes. So... Yeah. I'm okay. Like as long as you're creating value and you're putting value out there, that's the one thing that I've always done is just focus on the customer, help that person improve their life, make money. In my case, it's help them make money. And then let's say I charge $10,000, but I make them 5 million. Well, that it comes back to me. Right. Yeah. So as long as these guys are helping, they could be lying in their marketing or whatever, but as long as they're helping, then I don't think it's that bad. Right, and if right. they're taking concepts, as long as they're crediting me yeah. with the concept, okay, that's great. And then why, like, so you said before that you like paid traffic better, better than organic. Yeah. Why? Because it's controllable. 
the have you guys worked with the algorithm you got you're in podcasting so you yeah. know this you got to work with the algorithm and yeah. the algorithm changes by the day so it's a it's it's laborious right to yeah. to yeah. work the algo yeah with paid traffic you just you're paying for the eyeball. It's like the most beautiful thing ever. Right. You can prosper. It's like going, I can knock on someone's door. I could do door to door sales to someone in India. Mm -hmm. Right. That's a, when was I able to do, when was I able to do that? When was anyone able to do that mm -hmm. in the past? Mm -hmm. They weren't. So to me, it's a beautiful thing. Pay traffic, give your money to Zuckerberg, give your money to Google, but just know how to use that, use that, uh, that channel. And, and, and you probably shouldn't run, like you shouldn't spend any money on paid traffic unless you have A, a kick-ass sales funnel and B, a kick-ass video sales letter? No, that's, that's what you might think. But the way that you get a kick-ass offer and a kick-ass sales letter and a kick-ass funnel is by spending traffic and going through the iterations. So you have to get eyeballs on your stuff first in order to get the feedback to make your funnel. So right. it's, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. So the way to get good at paid traffic, even without anything to start is to start spending on traffic and getting attention. So it's literally impossible to get good at paid traffic if you don't have any money. Yeah. Fuck. That sucks. But you need, but, it, you, but, but you don't need a lot of money. Like you need, you can start off with like $50 a day. Right. Right. So like you can live in a, box under the bridge and have some internet and you can do paid traffic like you know what i mean right, right, right. there's a way so yeah so, so you can't like like let's say i come to you and i write this fucking video sales letter i show everyone my mom loves it my fucking ex-girlfriend hates it but she just fucking doesn't like anything that i do you know what i'm saying so it's all good but i got the sales letter I why would you show it to her then because i'm fucking i'm like i'm gonna make millions off this okay like, i believe it. in this sales letter got it and i bring it to you and you're like, you might even like it, but you're like, yeah, but you still have to test it. So I don't know. Like, is that, is that the approach? Pretty much. Like, I don't know the market. So the market will tell you if it's good or not mm. based on, do they book appointments with you? Do they buy from that sales letter? Right. It's essentially a big ad. What is what the audience is? What's the sales letter? It's a big ad. It's a long form ad. Ty Lopez here in my garage video, dollar shave club. Those types of videos. Those are sales letter videos. Bangers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so in order to get to that point, you need a lot of, exp you need a lot of data from the market. The yeah. way that you get data from the market is by talking to the market through prospecting with paid traffic. Yeah. And do you believe that like with a sales letter, you need to have like all types of like, cause I know with the dollar shave club ad, they, um, it's not just a guy sitting down speaking on his computer. Like he's like fucking, he's like chopping shit with a machete. You know what I'm saying? And like, there's a fucking, he's got like this group of Mexicans and he's like, I have like, you know, I don't know. Like, but he, there's a whole bunch of shit going on there. You know? Yeah. But to get to that point, how many iterations did it take? Yeah. That's the, that's the whole thing. So how did you have to go through the, I think he was a copywriter by trade before that point. He did a lot of copywriting. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So it's about getting the reps in and re most of writing it. There's a book uh, called on writing. Well, it's a real, I recommend that book. Uh, most of writing is rewriting. So, if you want a banger, you need to rewrite it and get data. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all just trial and, and error. And that's what all growth consulting is. It's, it's using paid traffic channel. Everything's trending in that direction. Anyway, a lot of the organic stuff, like there's going to be a time when you cannot start a pod, right? Because it's too expensive and you're going to have to pay for eyeballs. So the mm. channels are getting more regulated and they're getting, it's more pay to play. Mm. Right. So everything is trending in that direction. Outbound prospecting is tr trending in that direction where right. they're limiting how many connections you can do on LinkedIn. They're limiting how many connections you can have on Facebook or Instagram or whatnot. They're going to limit your own reach. They're going to limit anyone with a channel. They'll eventually limit your own reach to your audience. And it's mm -hmm. whoever has the most money will be able to reach the audience. So it's all pay to play. It's all paid traffic at the end of the day. It's just, you're not there yet. Yeah. So yeah. you might as well just might as well get used to it in the beginning, in the beginning. Yeah. So how, how many more years, like, do you think, um, like, or number one is 2023 a good time to make money? Yes. And how many more years do we have until it's a bad time to make money on the internet using this yeah. strategy? I think we're just in, it's still in the infancy. 
Yeah. So because this is the future. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's the metaverse. It's metaverse money. Yeah. Right. Like metaverse is, is what we're doing right now. It's you're already on the metaverse watching YouTube. It's not, you're not in person. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Think about how many people make their money exclusively from the metaverse right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe what? 15% of people, yeah. 10, 15, 10, 15 percent. Yeah. We're going to be at like, we still have 80%. We need to hit 80%. What, what would be something that you would tell us? Like when I go home for the holidays and I try to like explain some of this stuff to my, like, like my family, they look at me like I'm fucking like I'm, I'm someone different, you know, like they, they can't understand it. What would be some things that, that I would be able to do to make my family understand the metaverse and all this stuff? You don't need to yeah. just do it. Like yeah. the, um, explaining explaining to it, it's it's uh unnecessary load on you yeah. yeah yeah right rather than just showing rather than just, just showing show some, just show the paycheck a, yeah you know your my, your family doesn't care they uh yeah so now how, wh- how the money's made so like so do you think that in 2023 is it a good idea to send your kid to college i'm i went to university So I have a different perspective. I think it's important for some things and not important for others. Like if you find your, if you're Mr. Beast and you're really good at YouTube and you figure that stuff out early, then I think it's, then I think it's fine to not go to university. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There are hidden benefits to going to university. So I'm like, there's a lot of people against it. I think that you build a network you're forced through some really hard problem solving if you'd pick the right program. And then you're also exposed to certain environmental elements that you wouldn't be exposed to if you didn't go. Mm. So stuff that people don't realize until maybe 20 years after. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, our, our benefits from university. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, a, I'm not for it or against it. I think it depends on who you are. Yep. Um, you want to kind of like shift gears and talk about like the personal questions that we had, like kind of like funny questions, like not yeah, funny, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. sure. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we'll do like a little bit of like a speed round, I guess. You cool with that? Okay. All right. Uh, what do you think about having a relationship in your twenties? If you want to be successful, is it stupid? Well, that was one of the questions today. I don't know if this is going to be a speed round, but yeah. I think it's if you want to make millions in your 20s, yeah. you're going to have to prioritize business over relationships. And so you either marry the girl and get your millions or wait until you have your millions and then marry the girl. Or, mm. yeah, yeah, that's it. So because you made you made a YouTube video called the energy it takes to win. Right. Is it still there? No. No. Why do you take it down? I took down the videos because I was changing the direction with the brand. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I wasn't sure if the content also, because a lot of the technology has changed. Yeah. I wasn't a hundred percent sure if the content was helping or not. So some of the, the stuff that I talked th- that I spoke about two years ago, three years ago, because the tech changed, I didn't want to keep it up there because it would mislead some of the viewers, mm-hmm. right? Like so if it's not the best strategy, I don't want to have it out there. So that's one of the other reasons. Yeah, I, mean, I thought that video was kick ass. That vi- that yeah. video was tech independent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Um, what 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 is your biggest purchase since having money? Donations. Really? really? Yeah. Wow. So, so, do you not believe in like the flashy lifestyle at all? I like it for marketing. Yeah. Because that's that gets views. Yeah. But. Um, I, and don't get me wrong. I went through the arc. Every entrepreneur goes through like, you get your Lambo and then you get this big mansion. And then you realize that that stuff is going to kill you. Yeah. So I already went through that whole thing. And now I just, I'm not interested in like big houses that you need to clean. And then you have to have staff yeah. and then you, then you have to hire a manager to manage a staff Then you have to hire all these people and they steal from you and like, and then it doesn't even get you any benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Like I went through all of the, all of the, every entrepreneur goes through that. Yeah. Wow. So do you live like pretty below your means? Yeah. Like I'm just, I got a a backpack. It's like, I call it icon lifestyle. (laughs) Carl, you know, Carl icon. No. 
No, no he's like the, no. one of the best investors. Just lean, mean. Yeah. yeah. He makes like 200 mil a deal. Backpack, scooting around. Uh huh. Yeah. So then, so all right, so all right, so let's say you're the new Carl Icon, you fucking crush. I think well, you I will, I'm not you know? going to even say that. That's, no? no, that's not even respectful enough to him. Mm, <laughs> wow. So, so you're not someone because I'm like I'm pretty delusionally optimistic. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm someone that like that. All right, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do this, but I'm going to say that I'm going to do it with the hope of like if I aim, if I go for that, and hopefully maybe I'll miss it by like a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, are, do you like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you're, I, you're, you already answered that question. You just live pretty day to day, day to day, put yeah. it on the field every day, yeah. make sure you're doing the right things every day, yeah. keep your chemistry proper. And then th- whatever happens, happens like, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's nothing else you can do. Make sure you're learning from the right people. Yeah. Who, who's the, who would you say is the most famous person in your phone, in your contacts? Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know, like, have you like, have you gotten into that lifestyle? A little bit. Yeah. 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 The, is that stuff fun? Like ever do like any like type of LA parties or anything like that? I think it's fun. Everyone's doing the same game though. They're all just half, like they're all business people at the end of the day. Yeah. Like if you're Leo DiCaprio, you're a businessman, right? right? If you, so everyone is a business person. Some, some people you never heard of that are huge. Mm-hmm. They're ghosts. Yeah, and those yeah. are the people that I really yeah. want, like, I, I like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, like, you, if you're living below your means and you're really not doing much, what are you, like, what are you going to make all this money for? Donate it? Donate it, yeah. That's yeah. another, that's a big thing. Because you need, I think that's going to be a more important thing because there's, Going forward, people are going to make a lot of money and then they're going to private donate to certain things that they like. I think that's because at the end of the day, you don't you don't need billions of dollars. Like, what are you going to spend it on? Right. Right. More. I think the more wealthy you get, the less you need. You just you're happy with. Like a clean air and clean bed and like that stuff is important. Yeah. Um, So. Yeah, donation don- donation is important. Yeah. Cool. So you cool. my my last question is like so you're essentially like, you know, almost playing this like a game and just kind of trying Seems to like, like a sport. Like I prove get, yourself I, like like hey, I can do it, you right. know, and like you just don't care about like obviously like you said money matters, but like you said the biggest thing you do is donate. So it's like is this that's just That's the most I think that's the most useful thing I do and that's yeah. So do you find like a lot of fun in this? Like, is this like almost like a sport? Yeah, it's it's more of a sport. It's more of a game. Yeah. And I got everything that I need. Like I got, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. So see, because we're on the opposite side of the table. Like, like we actually are on the opposite side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, bro, like I I don't need like, you know how fucking shitty it feels when you want to go bowling and you can't go bowling. You know, like you. <laughs> Unless there's a fucking Groupon yeah. for, for two hours. <laughs> right, 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 right. But like that, that's the shit that the average person thinks about on a day-to-day basis. So it's like, it's, it's hard sometimes to, but it's cool to see someone else's perspective of it because, you know, you, like I said earlier, you see it all the time. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money doesn't buy this. And I, but I guess it's all like what it, ma- it makes me almost fits not, you. It makes me almost not want to be you in a sense <laughs> because I want like, I want to. Yeah, but I already went through that. Right. I already did what you are thinking about yeah right. and so you got to keep in mind you have to go through that phase so if you guys become successful you will go get the cars you will go get the house you will go get strung out and throw massive parties and have tons of fun yeah. fun yeah and then you'll realize that that's not like you, you have it's everyone goes through that yeah that curve yeah. so i think you guys it's not it's not bad to want i wanted that stuff it's, a, it's like an adolescent fantasy. Yeah. So I already did my adolescent fantasy. Mm. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, because like, like me and him are like complete opposites, and that's why this kind of works, where it's like he, he loves that stuff. Like I'm kind of on the opposite yeah. spectrum of that. I'm more just like I want just the freedom to do what I want. Like I want to wake up and just be able to like have a nice breakfast and hit the gym and not have to worry hotel. about like where, where my next fucking $100 is coming from to pay fucking gas, you know? Yeah. So it's like... 
Yeah. It's uh, but like I, I totally agree. I think like you have to go through like like in anything in life, you have to go through something to understand and have a different viewpoint on the other side mm-hmm. of it. Like five years ago, I wouldn't think that that's where you end up, where you don't care about the big house and donating is like the flex. Wow. Like look at some of the biggest guys. They're like, oh, I I donated over here. Like that's a flex, right? Wow. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is fucking cool. J five, you got anything? Well, yeah, is there anything you want to speak about? Anything, you know? If anyone's interested in growthconsulting.com, go to growthconsulting.com and book a call. There we go. Awesome. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm fucking interested in growthconsulting.com. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here, you know, I'm like, bro, let's get that first 15K, put it in. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, for real. Patreon for real. gets up and running. I, yeah, I, I like, I, yeah, the Patreon, right? Yeah. Um, thank you for coming on, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, seriously. Thank you for taking the time, man. This was uh this was cool. Learned a lot, honestly. Especially just sitting here, like, you know, before just Yeah. I would say I would say for anyone listening. Sponge. I would say for anyone listening, um, as far as making money online, if I wasn't doing this podcast stuff, it would be something that I would be doing. But I'm already three years ahead ahead of like falling on my face with podcasts, so now this is my lane. But like I know for a fact, even before growth consulting, not even like to plug you because I'm not really, really even trying to. I'm just trying to be honest. If I wasn't doing this, I would do sales and go. Mm-hmm. Make, I would fucking crush in sales. I feel like if I just can just like take my energy and not speak outside. You'd be of a it. very good salesman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, God wanted me to fucking eat nachos and break my back. And well, you're doing sales right now. This is podcasting. You're keeping people entertained, yeah. and you're teaching people stuff. So, you, I think you're in the right lane. Nick fucking Cosman, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you.